Good evening. Welcome to Lecture 9. Uh, in this chapter, we'll cover web hosting services, what functions are performed by electronic commerce software, the interactions between e-commerce software and database and ERP software, and how to use enterprise application integration and web services with electronic commerce software. <clears throat> we'll also cover um, electronic commerce software for small, medium, and large businesses and the interaction of electronic commerce software and customer relation management, knowledge management, and supply chain management software. <clears throat> Uh, e-commerce and web hosting. <clears throat> Self-hosting is running servers in-house and it's most often used by large companies. Third-party web hosting service providers offer web services for electronic commerce functions and they're often used by mid-size or small companies. <clears throat> Commerce service providers, CSPs, provide internet access and web hosting services. They offer web server management and rent application software. They're also known as managed service providers, MSPs, or application service providers, ASPs. <coughs> Some of the uh, web hosting service options include a shared hosting, which means the client's website is on a server hosted with other websites simultaneously. A dedicated hosting means the web client server, uh, the client web server is not shared with other clients. The server provider owns and maintains the server hardware and leases it to a client and provides internet access. <clears throat> With a co-location service, the provider rents physical space to the client with a reliable power supply and internet connection. The clients install and maintain server hardware and software. <clears throat> Some of the decisions that must be made regarding web hosting are to decide on the hardware, platform, and software combination. Um, it should be upgradable when the site's web traffic increases. Uh, decide on a scalable hardware and software combination that's adaptable to meet changing requirements. <clears throat> All electronic commerce solutions must provide a catalog display, shopping cart capabilities, and transaction processing. Larger complex sites may include software with added features and capabilities. <clears throat> catalog display software. A catalog organizes goods and services being sold. With online, you can organize by logical departments. Web stores have the advantage in that a single product may appear in multiple categories. A catalog is a listing of goods and services. A static catalog is a simple list written in HTML. You have to edit the HTML to add or delete items. A dynamic catalog stores information in a database with photos, detailed descriptions, and also includes a search tool for locating the item and determining availability. These are located in the third tier of the website architecture. <clears throat> a shopping cart software. Early electronic commerce used forms-based shopping. Shoppers selected items by filling out online forms, 
which was awkward if you're ordering more than two or three items, and was prone to errors. Electronic shopping carts are now the standard. They keep track of items the customer selected and allows them to view the cart contents, add and remove items from the cart. Ordering requires a simple click which executes the purchase transaction. The screen then asks for billing and shipping information. <clears throat> Um, the web is a stateless system that does not retain information from one transaction to another. Shopping cart software then must store information. Cookies allow information to be stored and retrieved. If the browser does not allow cookie storage, the software automatically assigns a temporary number to the transactions and show up in the URL. <clears throat> Dynamic pricing management software adjusts prices in real time based on variables that the seller chooses. Promotion management software allows sellers to create special offers on special products. <clears throat> fulfillment integration software connects the seller's shopping cart to fulfillment providers' computers, so in shipping uh, automatically is triggered at the completed sale. The product review management software allows customers to post reviews of products. Product recommendation triggers are tools that respond to customers product selection and provides suggestions for related products or refills. <clears throat> Abandoned Cart management software enables shopping carts to be retained for later when the customer session can be continued. A transaction processing occurs when a shopper proceeds to virtual checkout counter by clicking the checkout button. E-commerce software performs the calculations to complete the transaction. A web browser software and the seller's web server software um, switch into secure communication state at the beginning of that transaction. Uh, E-commerce software communicates with the accounting software, uh, including the sales and inventory modules. FedEx and UPS shipping rate software integrates with electronic commerce software. Other calculations include coupons, promotions, and time-sensitive offers. <clears throat> so here we see a, a typical shopping cart page where the customers have added items and a, a review of the uh, extension of each item and the quantity and then a total uh, including the subtotal and discounts um, is provided and then a, a button to click on to go to checkout. And here's the basic electronic commerce site architecture of the web server uh, has a catalog display, a shopping cart, and transaction processing uh, modules, and the consumer can do shopping, buying, and make inquiries across the internet. <clears throat> so how does electronic commerce software work with other software? Uh, most large companies with electronic commerce operations also have substantial business activity unrelated to electronic commerce. It's important to integrate electronic commerce activities into the company's other operations. The basic information system is an organization um, is a collection of databases. Uh, databases are highly structured uh, information stored on a computer. 
A database management software allows users to enter, edit, update, retrieve database information. Distributed information systems are large systems storing data in many different physical locations. Distributed database systems are databases within distributed information systems. The MySQL database is an open source software owned by Oracle and maintained by a group of programmers. <coughs> Middleware takes sales and inventory shipment information from electronic commerce software. It transmits them to accounting and inventory management software modules. Companies can write their own or purchase customized middleware. Uh, interoperability is making different information systems work together, and that's what's happening with middleware. <clears throat> A middleware cost ranges from 30000 to several million dollars, depending on the complexity and the existing systems. Enterprise application integration. Application software is a program that performs a specific function like creating invoices. Um, application servers take request messages received by a web server and runs application programs performing various actions based on a request messages contents. Uh, actions are determined by business logic rules such as verifying customer password upon login. Enterprise application integration is the creation of links among the various applications that are needed in a transaction so that business logic can be interconnected. <clears throat> As information is transferred from one application to another, program data uh, formats in the different applications may differ. So the enterprise application integration must edit and reformat, and it often uses XML for accomplishing that. Integration with enterprise resource planning software. Uh, ER, ERP software is uh, a business systems uh, integrating all facets of a business. The modules include accounting, logistics, manufacturing, marketing, planning, project management, and treasury functions. Two major ERP vendors are Oracle and SAP. ERP software uh, installation costs can vary between 1 million and 10 million for a mid-sized company. Smaller online businesses can purchase products like NetSuite that offer ERP system subscriptions. It's called software as a service. A software <coughs> Uh, here we see the um, software known as ERP, uh, its overall architecture, and how it uh, can be integrated with um, EDI that we covered in a previous lecture. Web services are um, an important part of e-commerce software. A software systems uh, support direct machine-to-machine -machine interaction over a network if they provide web services. Uh, they are a set of software and technologies allowing computers to use the web to interact with each other directly. It, in other words, it does not require human operators directing the computer interactions. An application program interface, API, is a general name for the ways programs interconnect with each other. Web APIs interact over the web. What web services can do 
Well, they offer um, improved customer service and reduced costs. They work by transmitting XML tag data from one application to another. They provide data feeds between two different companies. Uh, programmers write software accessing business application logic functions and they don't have to know the details of how those functions are implemented, only the application programming interface. This allows communication between programs written in different languages on different platforms. And a good example of this is transaction processing. How uh, web services work? A machine-to-machine -machine communication was originally accomplished with HTML, but now most use XML. An example is purchasing software um, used to obtain uh, vendor price information. A purchasing agent authorizes a transaction and the web services submit an order and tracks it until it's delivered. As web servers become more sophisticated, they can often make decisions on their own. Web services specifications. SOAP is the Simple Object Access Protocol and it's a message passing protocol. It defines how to send marked up data from one software application to another across a network. It utilizes three rule sets. Communication rules are included in the SOAP specification. Web Services Description Language, WSDL, describes functional characteristics of each web service. A Universal Description, Discovery, and Integration Specification, UDDI, works as an address book to identify web services locations and associated descriptions. <clears throat> REST and RESTful Design. REST stands for Representational State Transfer. It's a principle describing how the web uses networking architecture to identify and locate web pages. It's also for identifying elements making uh, up those web pages. RESTful applications are web services built on the REST model. <clears throat> they transfer structured information from one web location to another. Services are accessible at a specific address. And more than half of all web services today are RESTful applications. Now we'll discuss some of the commerce service providers. Um, the basic commerce ser service providers, or CSPs, <clears throat> involve the use of a service provider's shared or dedicated hosting services. It shifts the staffing burden from the company to the web host. Um, it spreads the web hosting cost over all hosted businesses. The host provider keeps the server working and they do that through storms and power outages. CSPs offer free or low-cost e-commerce software. Can be less than twenty dollars per month with the software built into the site. Some examples of companies providing this include Gate.com, ProHosting.com, one and one Internet, and Yahoo. Mall-style CSPs provide small businesses with basic website online store design tools 
templates, and easy-to-use interfaces. They have a low monthly fee, a one-time setup fee, and a percentage or fixed amount for each transaction. Shopping cart software and payment processing software are included. Two main mall-style CSPs are Amazon Services for Business and eBay Stores for Businesses. There's no long-term commitment and few upfront costs. Some of the actual cost estimates include for small web businesses um, <clears throat> The cost to become operational is between $400 and $8,000. And this assumes that less than 100 items will be for sale and business already has computer and internet access. We'll look at a figure that shows the range of estimates for first year expenses for small businesses in just a moment. Um, Self-hosting costs include one-time basic server and router cost of between $2,000 to $10,000 plus annual cost of $400 to $1,800 for basic internet connection, $5,000 for a secure server room, $50,000 to $100,000 as payment for required technicians, and your annual total cost then will vary between 60000 to 100000 for self-hosted. <clears throat> and here we see um, an approximate cost to put a small store online. As long as you're not self-hosting. <clears throat> Let's look at some uh, mid-size businesses. Mid-range <clears throat> electronic commerce software costs between five thousand to two hundred thousand. Operating costs are between one thousand to thirty thousand annually. Uh, they offer connectivity to database or ERP systems that store inventory information. Intershop offers mid-range packages that include search and catalog capabilities, electronic shopping carts, credit card processing, and connection to back-end businesses and databases. Setup wizards catalog tools, data management functions, and built-in templates are included. They manage storefronts with web browser interfaces. <clears throat> Some website development tools. It's possible to use uh, web page creation and site management tools that we discussed in Lecture 2. After website creation, you can add purchased software elements and create a middleware or buy middleware. Um, some of the uh, products here include IBM WebSphere Commerce Professional which is a family of software components. It includes catalog templates, setup wizards, advanced catalog tools, it provides uh, a link with existing corporate systems, uh, inventory databases, and procurement systems. Um, customization of this package requires programmers with JavaScript, Java, or C++ experience. And it costs between $50,000 and $300,000 depending on the number of servers and options. <clears throat> electronic commerce software for large businesses. Larger businesses require many of the same advanced capabilities as mid-sized firms. 
You need the ability to handle higher transaction loads and dedicated software applications to handle specific online business elements. Um, enterprise class commerce software is used in large online business operations. It encompasses all areas of the business or enterprise, provides tools for business to business and business to consumer commerce. It interacts with a wide variety of existing systems and it costs between two hundred thousand to ten million dollars to uh, get something like that running. Um, enterprise class electronic commerce software requires several dedicated computers, a web server system, and firewalls. Um, IBM WebSphere Commerce Enterprise and Oracle eBusiness Suite and BroadVision are major players. <clears throat> this provides tools for linking to and supporting supply and purchasing activities. Secure transaction processing and, in, and fulfillment, interaction with the firm's inventory system to issue purchase orders, the ability to generate accounting en entries, and the ability to download electronic goods directly from the site. And here we see a, a typical enterprise class electronic commerce architecture and the complexity is apparent and the need to connect with a lot of sophisticated enterprise systems that a large organization would have. <clears throat> Let's finish with a uh, discussion of associated software with uh, e-commerce solutions. Uh, first we'll discuss content management software. It helps control large amounts of text, graphics, uh, and media files that have become crucial to doing business. Increased use of social media and networking um, is now part of online business operations. Software should be tested before you make a commitment to it. Um, there should be straightforward procedures for regular operations and it en should enable typical content creation tasks to be done intuitively. Leading providers include IBM and Oracle, and costs are between $50,000 and $500,000. It can cost three to four times that amount to customize, configure, and implement. Knowledge management software are systems that manage knowledge itself rather than the documentary representations of that knowledge. They collect, organize, and share knowledge, enhance collaboration, and preserve knowledge. Tools to read documents and conduct searches are part of knowledge management software, and they use proprietary, semantic, and statistical algorithms. Um, implementation costs vary between 100,000, uh, I'm sorry, between 10,000 uh, to a million or more. A supply chain management software. Um, SCM software components manage demand and supply, planning and demand fulfillment. Uh, they help coordinate planning and operations with your supply chain partners. Uh, planning software develops coordinated demand forecasts. Uh, execution software helps with warehouse and transportation management. The cost of SCM software implementation varies tremendously based on the number of locations. The range is from under 300,000 to over 5 million. <clears throat> A customer relation management 
software. Now, the goal here is to understand customers' specific needs and customize product or services to meet those needs. Software must obtain data from operations software and gather data about customer activities. Then, use that data to conduct analytical activities. The basic form of CRM uses uh, customer information to sell more goods and services. An advanced form of CRM delivers attractive, positive customer experiences. <clears throat> CRM is important in maintaining customer loyalty when the purchase process is long and complex. From 1996 to 2000, companies spent millions to buy systems and restructure customer strategies. Bad experiences led to a change in thinking. It's now used to solve smaller, more specific problems. Some companies create their own CRM software, but most buy a software package. Prices start around 2000 and large implementations can cost millions. And here we see the main elements of a CRM system. It has models that it stores, it has results that it outputs, it gets data from customer touch points, their website interactions, uh, customer communications through phone calls, emails, and letters, uh, data from salespersons, from transaction records, and also data purchased from external sources. Well, that concludes our lecture for this evening. I'll see you on the forums.